Gampuz is a rhythmic cultural dance that was created by men in the golden mine in Johannesburg during the apartheid era. These men left their homeland to actually seek for work in Johannesburg and the only work that was available at the time it was mine working. So during their work period these guys were obliged to talk to each other. They were chained to each other and they were working in very harsh conditions, you know. Um, they were working with normal shoes and the mines at the time there was a lot of flood. So, you know, they would get feed infection, their feet would swell and all that. So the foremen or the bosses they thought uh, instead of trading the water out of their mines it would be easy for them and cheaper to buy these guys the Wellington boots. So, first, they, they couldn't speak to each other. They couldn't even talk to each other because of the diverse language that they had. Around uh, Africa, we have about 58 different languages, not even dialects, but their languages. So, while they were chained to each other, they created or they came up with the language called the Gambut language. So all these like, you know, storm, heat, or shake, it was a form of language itself. Let's say if the, the, the foreman was coming and someone see the foreman, it would just look. Then the other one would know or they would just stomp, rush, or they, they even like rush. All this is rush, 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 there's no time, you know? The foreman is here. And if I don't know, the walls go down, they would mainly like use the chains. If, if they put in a dynamite, you know, they would use like the, the shakers around them, and then they would shake them, and you know, the sound will go on and all till the last guy, you know? So everyone is aware now that the dynamite is about to go. And during their spare time, they kind of like, they, 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 you know, it started like it's, it's a play, you know, because they thought, oh, oh inside we, we're doing all this slapping and, and, and stomping and using this, so I, you know, like, oh, every time they're just sitting there, they, they come in with more, with, without even realizing that they're creating an extraordinary sound, you know, they were just going, 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 slaps, you know. So the, the, the history or the, the, the rhythm itself started developing more and more and more. It became interesting to them too because it was a way to, to change the, 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 their sad feelings to the, to the positive. And in, in most cases, as far as going and seeing their family, the, the bosses, they will decide at the time that, okay, between three months to six months, who's going home and seeing their family. And um, in most cases, they were so sad. The fact that one day working in harsh conditions, who were underground for 16 hours or more a day. They're not supposed to be talking to each other they were living in hostels, filthy hostels. So they they thought, let's let's use whatever we have to our advantage. We we communicate anyway using these boots and, and shackles and let's just use that to advantage. Let's during our spare time let's create more 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 steps. Let's let's create more hits. Let's let's shake the shakers more. They start creating more, like having fun, laughing, and you know, they would make fun of their foremen, they would make fun of their bosses, they would make... It was, it was more like a, a clown act during their, their spare time. The bosses saw these guys, the joy that they have, you know, and, and the sound and the rhythm that they created. They thought, huh? we can use this to uh, welcome our guests 
And then, you know, they started entertaining guests. And every guest came, <coughs> they would call like about a group of people. The hostels that they used to live in, it's a places that their bosses are built for them to live there. It's a place right next to the mine. So they basically like live in just one area. There's mini stores there where they can buy their own food, whatever. You know, just small supplies, not even like a, a supermarket where you can go and buy groceries. I mean, these guys didn't have like storages, they didn't have refrigerator, refrigerators, they didn't have so much. And uh, there is always rules everywhere, you know, either in the mines or in the hostels. You know, they were not supposed to be bringing any girls in the hostels. It's a man, you know, building, you know, and uh, it's, 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 it's a working environment. You're not supposed to be bringing friends. You're not supposed to bring family. You're not supposed to bring your wife. You're not supposed to bring your pet. And... Um, these guys, they, of course, they from they from they have different uh, uh, cultures where they from originally from their homeland, and uh, me myself, I'm a Zulu. You know, as Zulu people, they 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 animal people, they hunting people. They use a lot of hands within their dance. They use a lot of hands. They 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 form they form lines. They interpret more, a lot of animals. And um, talking about Sutu people, Sutu people are more like a, a, they wear they wear blankets. It could be cold or hot. They'll be wearing blanket. And the main thing of the blanket is a basic. They they spiritual people. The blanket represents the ancestors. So if someone within the ancestors, you know, pass away, one within the family has to wear a blanket. You know, in that case, if that particular person that passed away comes to the dream and say, I'm, I'm cold or whatever, it, it's, it's, one has to wear that to, to cover the, the cold. So in, in most cases, when you look at them, they always like down to earth, they wearing blanket. So in most cases, their movement is more down and it's more like just small movement, you know? All these form of, of their own culture, they interpret it and, and actually put it into their movement. So that's why like in most cases, when you see a campus dance, I'll see a small movement and then you see I guess a big movement. A small movement in most cases it's a cold movement. It represents the sadness, you know, the harshness of life, you know, and and all this it's more happy, it's more wild, it's it's more happy. And um for sure they they experience a lot in the mind from what I've been told. They experience a lot. You know, for an example, if someone dies in the mind. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot for these guys. It's a lot the fact that they already, just by being there in Johannesburg, they already lost their families because they see them once, in a, once or twice in a year. At first, most of the guys, they were like from Central and South of Africa, not mainly in, in Johannesburg. And they, they kind of form another family with these guys, you know, that they're working with. So, you know, in most cases, if someone dies, it's, it's, it's sad. It, that's where it goes back to, to, to the Sutu culture.
when 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 time goes, these guys, you know, they they started like kind of understanding or having an understanding to the Johannesburg culture because now the guys from Johannesburg will come and work there. But the fact that they live there, they, they just go home instead of staying there in the hostels. They started going to like, you know, the nightclub of which we call them Shibins. So they will go to the Shibins and actually like mingle with the crowd there. And they also took gambles to uh, uh, Josie. You know, the guys around Johannesburg, we call it Josie. Guys around Johannesburg will uh, start kind of like be interested in learning the campus, and that's how it actually went from simple steps and the entertainment in their work period to the theater. So these guys they started kind of like learning now the, the Johannesburg culture, the slang. So they would learn a lot about how like these guys like walk or talk or, and then they'll take it and, and interpret it to their movement. Or like, uh, or the, the sassiness of the girls in the shibins where they were drinking like, oh, mm, you know, sugar, or all this stuff. Or the bouncers in the shibin, like, we'll be talking about a big guy. So these guys will know because it's their language they, they used to, they, they used to like signs and stuff. They would, they would just use their eyes and be like, then you know they're talking about the big guy over there. And then they, you know, like, <laughs> you know the big guy over there, or maybe the big guy is looking at the sassiness, you know. Like, just small thing like that, they, they, they would already like just cracking up, you know. So, and, and then they, they, used it and even today the, the campus always like uh, evolved from then till now what they have been performing back then is different from now it has been just going up and up and up and up and up yes it started as a culture yes it started as as, as something that they they have to like kind of find a way to communicate and then it becomes an entertainment and then now it's 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 something you can take it anywhere you, you find campus in the theater, you, you find campus in like big productions, you know. So many people in South Africa have been talking about it, you know, and, and so many people have tried to learn and, and even white people, they now doing campus. So it's like, you know, you go to South Africa, it's like, it's not, it's not a dream, but people, they want to know what it is because it's, it's one of the dancing, dance form that, it's actually existing even today that made, you know, uh, that made history in South Africa. So it's, it's a powerful dance. It's a, it's, if you see someone doing uh, campus, you would see the power in it. You would see the sadness in it. You would see the anger in it. You would see the happiness in it. It's not just the one feeling all the way. It's, it's, its its nature changes according to 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 the story they're trying to to portray at the time so within one let's say within a minute they would they would tell a story just by slipping boots when you look at them in their faces they would tell a story in a minute of you know the, their sadness and happiness and all that like you'd see in like just one minute when you see someone doing campus.